All right, guys, so here we have the one-to-one -one scale Soul Hornet from Kurobukiya's Megami device line. And once again, this is the low visibility version, so it's gonna be a little bit different colors than just the standard version, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Okay, I believe the water slides are also probably the same. Actually, I'm not sure about that, but it does come with a full set of water slides. I'll show you guys again that's here in a moment if you didn't see the unboxing, or of course we took a look at those. Just want to say again a huge thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review, guys. If you guys are unfamiliar with USA Gundam Store, they of course sell plenty of Gunpla, as you would imagine, but they're also now selling some Kotobukiya kits as well, so if you guys are looking for a good place to get your Kotobukiya kits, or if you're interested in checking some of them out, you can check out their site. Use my coupon code there, ZakuraLease10, works on those kits as well. So, just a couple months ago, I kind of finally made the dive into the Frame Arms Girls line, which this is, of course, very similar to, both from Kotobukiya and, of course, kind of similar in their engineering. And one thing that held me back from the Frame Arms Girl line, and this line as well, all of these kind of kits, is that they are a little bit pricey. They're uh, they seem like kind of a lot for what you get in the box, but uh, what I discovered with the Kotobukiya Frame Arms kit that I reviewed as well as with this kit as well here again is that what you're getting in the box, it may not feel like all that much, but the quality is so, so good. Everything, uh, the construction, everything fits super well. Everything just works really nicely. The, con the articulation of everything is so good and it just looks really cool and you have tons and tons and tons of options for customization. So if that's your thing, if that's what you like to do, uh, you've got a lot to work with with uh, these kits like this so that's the one thing that I think is really cool about these and they're just really fun and interesting to build if you're just building Gunpla all the time and Gundams like I usually am it's kind of fun to take a break and build something different every now and then too so and these are just really fun to build so like I said a main aspect of these is the customization so we do have a couple different kind of forms of the uh, Soul Hornet here in this case this is the completely armored up uh, form I guess kind of with like all the armor kind of that you get all of the kind of add on parts that you get with this minus the weapons but that's what you get but then you can of course like take some more of that off and then you do have some also skin tone parts so I guess it's kind of like a fully armored up mode or just kind of standard armored up mode and then a kind of well let's just say a no armor mode and so I'll go through all of those here and kind of show you everything that you can do but another cool thing that you can do with this is combine the armor uh, with the Soul Hornet as well as with the Soul Roadrunner which I'll be reviewing next after this but I do already have that one built already at the time of, of uh, filming this so I can uh, show you guys how this is going to look with the Roadrunner armor on here as well so we'll take a look we'll go through all of that so let's just get started and talk about this kit here Okay, so just a quick reminder about a couple things that we do have included with this kit. Here is, once again, the sheet of water slide decals that we have included. So a bunch of really cool markings and everything for this, as well as some numbers, and then different markings here for the eyes, and then there's some uh, Megami device markings there as well. So a lot of really great water slides to put on here once you've got the kit all painted up. On the back, you'll notice this connection part, which connects it to the arm of the base, is kind of at an upward angle. That's for when it's uh, kind of got this extra armor on, and especially when it's got the high heels on, because that makes it taller. But when you don't have those on, we do also have a different connection piece, which is just straight on, and that one's going to be much more helpful for uh, when you don't have the kind of high heel boot parts on and when you just have it with just the normal feet it's going to be standing lower so this uh, different connection piece will help you with that. Well a lot of the parts on this kit are molded in ABS plastic. We do get this Y runner here which is uh, going to be not in ABS plastic and this is for the hip joint as well as the wrist joints so if you want to have those in just a regular plastic and not uh, ABS you do have these parts that you can use as well. For a few different weapon option things that I'll mention now, we do have these two, I'm gonna call them beam sabers because I don't really know what else really to call them. Uh, one thing you'll notice though is that unfortunately the handle is molded together with this, so you will have to paint that if you don't want the handle to also be clear. But it's a really cool like clear orange color, it's a little bit dark, I think it would have been cool if it was maybe a little bit lighter, brighter color, but if you catch the light right, they shine uh, pretty nicely. And then we have kind of its main weapon is just this rifle, it's nothing too crazy, but some nice color separation there with that kind of um, metallic silver there for the barrel. All in all, it's really nicely shaped, I think, and that just fits into the hand. We have a whole bunch of different hand option parts. I'll go over those next with you guys, but we do also have these two connection pieces, one for the left side and one for the right side. So this is for mounting, uh, connecting the rifle onto the side skirt kind of of it. It'll just connect that right into this 
part right there and then this just connects onto this part here on the side. Now what I found is that while everything on this kit is super nice, the connection's really nice, everything's really strong, you can move stuff around, it's not like crumbling in your hand, but for some reason these parts here on the side will crumble very, very easily. This one here on the back side and this one here on the front side are connected up underneath this main part here and they're not really held in there very tightly. So while you're moving the kit around, if you touch this in the wrong way, those will just fall apart very, very easily. So I definitely re would recommend gluing those together. Gluing them won't mess with the articulation of anything at all. It will just make sure that those parts just won't fall apart and you won't lose anything. So definitely do that. And yeah, just as I was taking the kit off the stand there, that just fell apart just because of the weight of the gun pulling on that. So let's just take a look at a few things here. We do also have some pre-painting, this little orange bit here on this part on the chest that's pre-painted as well as the little white lines there on that part there on the stomach. Those are also pre-painted. You've kind of got like the handles for the beam sabers here. They're just connected there in like the top of that chest part, but you can't actually use those. So it kind of would have really been better if they would have just given you the beam like effect parts like what we normally get with a Gundam kit or something and then you can just connect those into the handle. But you know, you can always just modify that I suppose if you wanted to. This lower part of of the mask can be removed like so and then you can actually see her like chin and face a little bit more there and then you can actually connect this onto the front of the chest armor as like a separate thing so that can just be connected onto there instead if that's how you prefer to have that or just have it without I think probably for me I'll just kind of just go without that part probably in the end but that works pretty cool and that allows you again like I said to see more of the face there are a few different face options for this so this is just one of those that I've gotten there I'll show you the other ones in a moment these little winglet bits on here I would also recommend gluing because I'm finding they're also called falling off off very easily. Yeah, so these parts as well, you can see there's this connection piece here, which will connect like the side wing into the main wing. I would glue that into here, but then you'll still be able to move this side bit a little bit side to side there, but it's just the, the connection part there. I would recommend gluing that little bit there as well. So here on the backpack, you can see we have a pretty interesting contraption with this like kind of Kermit the Frog almost looking face there at the center of the backpack. It kind of that looks interesting, but I like just how we have like these big huge engines basically here on the back, which is cool. So there's a lot of articulation. You move that up and down. You can rotate that there. You can rotate that at the base as well. You can rotate that here. This whole like part rotates here. So you just have stuff you're, you're able to move that kind of all over the place. The unfortunate thing is that this arm is just not very long, so you're able to move it around a lot, but you can't really move it too far away from the back. One of the ways it is also shown in the manual though is like over the front of the shoulder like so, so that it kind of provides more uh, forward defense, I guess, uh, from attack. So that works pretty well. It kind of re renders the engines not very useful in this position, but it does give you uh, that extra blocking there in the front. As for our face options, you can see we've got that very excited face there, which also has some pre-painting on that, the separate little part there in there for the mouth. We have this kind of uh, not amused face here. And then we just have just this kind of standard looking face. So between the three of those, they're pretty all right options. Uh, maybe one more kind of would have been nice, but you got a pretty good range. For our hands, we've just got this kind of open, just kind of neutral hand there. We've also got two different kinds of holding hands, one with an extended trigger finger and one with just uh, kind of a slightly extended trigger finger, but these are going to be for holding different weapons and things. We also have another open hand, which is just a more open expressive hand. And then finally a closed fist. Now these are all pretty nice, but they are a little bit softer plastic and they do all have some pretty nasty mold lines on there. So you will have to do a little bit of very careful sanding on those to get rid of the mold lines on them.
Okay, so let's say you wanted to try it out without this big backpack on here. So basically this is just all connected onto this peg at the lower back. Here we go. And in the process of doing that, of course, those side skirts just fell apart. But there you can see that's where this is all connected. But maybe you want to keep those side skirt bits on there. I'm just calling them side skirts just because that's kind of, I guess, the closest thing to it. Then instead of that, it can use this other piece on here, which will just plug into there. And you can take those side bits and then plug them onto here and then you can have them in use with just the form without the backpack and you can still have those on there for if you wanted to keep like the rifle holster on the side or something like that or you know because all these peg sizes are all universal everything just kind of can fit in everywhere you could plug these backpack bits just like straight onto here just like straight onto the lower back without that main part of the backpack on so there's a lot of things of course that you could do in terms of customizing this Okay, and then after swapping some parts there for the shoulders, the top of the thighs, the stomach section, and the neck, uh, to our skin tone parts, we've got the kind of no armor form. Also the feet too, you swap the feet, those aren't in skin tone, but they're just kind of normal feet without the kind of high heel armor bits on there. So this would be your most stripped down version of this model without anything extra on it. And yeah, so this is, Kind of something that you can do with this of course uh leaving all those parts left over not being used does seem like a little bit of a waste but of course you can use those on different kits uh, mixing and matching stuff and just kind of having fun with that okay so now before we get into arming this back up with the combination of the soul hornet as well as the soul roadrunner armor i just want to show that to you guys too and wrap up the review i just want to go over a little bit of the articulation now that we've just kind of got it in its base form of course all the articulation will still hold true with everything else on it you'll just have to account for some stuff possibly uh, getting in the way here and there but let's talk about the head because this is one thing that's a little bit disappointing for me. The hair in the back prevents the neck from going up very high uh, where the head connects onto the neck. You can tilt the neck up, but it's at this joint here and then that looks very strange. You want it to tilt up at that higher joint, but it's a little bit blocked there. So that is one dis uh, dif disappointing bit about the articulation. Obviously the head goes down there, no problem at all. And then as you've seen, there's a joint there at the base of the neck as well. You can also, of course, turn the head and all of that, no problems with that. The head is just connected onto a ball joint, but there is also a joint there in the neck as well, so you can like turn the whole neck as well, so it looks kind of interesting like that, I suppose. In the middle of the torso here, there's a joint that will move forward and back, side to side, and rotate there. And then at the base here, the hips, the whole hip joint will swing forward and back. But you are able to bring the legs out almost to a complete splits there. The shoulder joint for me was one of the most noticeable differences from the Frame Arms stylet that I built, uh, the Frame Arms Girl stylet, in that this whole shoulder part here, and as you can see, it has like these shoulder blade parts there. And that whole bit uh, will move forward like so, which is uh, pretty helpful for posing. Otherwise, the whole arm is connected via a ball joint into that part. And then there's a hinge, which will allow you to move it up and down there it's also able to rotate it there in the middle of the upper arm and then a joint there in the elbow will give you a pretty full bend there at the elbow as well it's just a single joint but you have plenty of room to move that around and the wrist is on a kind of swivel joint so you can move it uh, back and forth like so but then you can also turn that around it'll basically move any way that you want possibly a wrist to move. Back down here to the legs, you're able to bring the leg forward to about there. Now you may be thinking that's not really all that high, it's really only about to 90 degrees, but of course the swinging hip will allow you to bring that up even higher, and then the joint in the torso will allow you to bend that even further. 
And then our double joint in the knee will allow you to bring the leg all the way down like that. So you can do uh, pretty much any humanly possible pose. I mean, even something like this uh, is pretty amazing with a kit like that to just have that much articulation, everything built into it to be able to uh, be able to do some very lifelike poses. And then just down here in the feet as well, those will just rotate side to side and move forward and back. Plenty of rotation there. And then the toe also bends on its own as well. So the feet are also very, very nicely articulated. So yeah, I think it's safe to assume that whatever pose you might have in mind for the kits, it's not really going to be an issue with the articulation pretty much allowing you to move it into any which way that you might want. And that should make it pretty easy or at least pretty enjoyable to get it into uh, just the right pose. Sometimes, you know, with Gumpla kits, we're limited by their articulation, but with these kits, uh, they're pretty unlimited in terms of uh, their posing options. So that's always nice. Now, uh, it takes a little bit of work to get every, all the joints, everything kind of lined up when you're working with something that's uh, sort of humanistic. Uh, if something's kind of bent in just slightly the wrong angle or something's a little bit off like that, it's very easy to notice. So you kind of have to do a little bit of work with it to get it posed like, kind of just right, to get everything so it's looking natural. But it is able to do that and after it's all posed up, it's gonna look really nice. All right, and so to wrap up this review, here it is combined with the parts of the Roadrunner. Basically, all it is is just swapping the legs. You just put the legs from the Soul Roadrunner onto there. And then also you can take some of the weapons parts. The Soul Roadrunner has that kind of shield thing, which is not really all that great, to be honest. But then it also has the, the kind of heat blade under its weapon, which you can connect underneath the rifle that comes with this kit. And to make that makes a pretty cool looking weapon, I gotta say. So I don't know, between the two kits, I think ultimately what I might end up doing is having one like this uh, just like fully armored up with both the backpack parts of the Hornet and then the leg parts of the Roadrunner kind of like all together and then keep one and just kind of like the basic simple version and maybe do something else with that or something I don't know I think that might be kind of cool so I don't know otherwise uh, I mean really really cool kits again the customization options that you have with this are all very very many as Kotobukiya kits tend to be, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's got some little parts on there that are a little bit more finicky. They tend to just kind of fall off a little bit easier. Uh, just get a little bit of glue, put in a little bit of extra work into this. If you're gonna paint it, you know, it's gonna be looking much better. Um, even if you don't paint it, these kits still do look pretty awesome just straight out of the box like this. You will see on like the molded silver and molded bronze kind of color parts, the nub marks will show uh, pretty bad on those though. So you might want to at least just paint the metallic parts or something on that. But overall, pretty fantastic kit, a lot of fun to build and highly, highly recommended guys, whether you wanna get this one uh, or the Roadrunner, which we'll be taking a look at next. Uh, uh, maybe wait until you see that review as well, but pretty much I can tell you now that they're both pretty awesome. So whether you get the regular version or the low visibility version, again, as far as I know, it's, they're exactly the same, just colors different. And uh, I believe the markings are also probably the same. And yeah, I just wanna once again say a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review, guys. Check the link to their site down below. And if you guys do have any of the further questions or comments down below, uh, leave those there. There's a lot of different options you can do with this kit, so I couldn't show you everything in the review, but you can obviously use your imagination. I hope this review was helpful if you guys were interested in seeing more about these kits. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.